American football in Finland. The voice and the face on your screen is perfect purpose. And this is American football in Finland. Today, I'm joined by my co-host, Chris Green. What's going on? What's going on, Purvis? Episode number three, ready to rock and roll. Got a new team to talk about today. I'm excited to talk about this team in particular. So, yeah, let's get it going. All right, the AFF podcast is everywhere you listen to your podcast. Watch us on YouTube. Uh, wherever you do, wherever you listen or watch, make sure you subscribe, like, follow, all that stuff. And if you don't listen or watch, that's okay. We know you're a hater, and we're cool with that now because we're going to call you a fan anyways. Let's get into the show. All right, it's first down where we get a chance to talk about whatever is relevant to us. Uh, Chris, what's going on with you? Well, being a teacher, there's always a countdown to the, the school holidays and the Easter holidays coming up. I get two weeks off, so it's going to be chill. I'm actually going to Hamburg in those two weeks, playing an exhibition game for the Sealand Seahawks, which is an ex- exhibition team I play for, a national team for Sealand. And we're playing against the Hamburg Huskies, so that should be good fun. Get to see a bit of Germany and play a bit of ball while I'm out there as well. Ah, Easter holidays. You know what's interesting? Now I'm going to talk about Easter holidays. For my about having the um, the egg find with my daughter out there on the snow here in Finland because I live in Lati. We get all the way until like May. So even for Easter, go outside, hide eggs in the snow and she goes and finds them because that's how we do it. This is Finland. Another interesting thing is Easter is a huge time for like basketball tournaments here. It's not similar to March Madness big tournament but all all well one thing there's a huge tournament here in Lati but then in different countries there's usually a lot of like Easter tournaments there's one in, there might be one like Estonia or something maybe it's a Nordic country thing I don't know if the other countries do that but I do know like since I've been living in Finland Easter is a huge tournament so that's that'll be interesting because uh, my wife coaches basketball so I'll be watching a little bit of some basketball here in Lati as well in the snow. Oh, and I'll be playing a little flag football, but I won't get too much into that. If you know, you know. On to the show. Are you a fan of the American Football in Finland podcast? Show your support and style. Rock our logo proudly on hoodies, t-shirts, beanies, and snapbacks, all designed for fans like you. Join us in celebrating American Football in Finland. Grab your gear and be a part of the AFF community. All right, the 2024 Maple League season, it's wide open. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Who I'm picking, because I think anybody could win it. Anybody could, you know, upset anybody. So it's going to be a really open season this year. So we're going to talk Roosters today. Uh, these guys, last year, Roosters got into the playoffs. I think they were the four seed. But going into the, the last year, I mean, they looked like the best team. And they got really good at the end of the season. But this is a new season. They have new. We're going to talk about this team right after this break. All right, let's talk about the Roosters getting back on top. I mean, when was the last time they went to the Maple Bowl? Do you remember? It seems so long 20, ago. 2020, maybe? Was it the COVID year? I think they went after. Didn't they go 2021? Because Crocs went 2020. Uh, last year was year before was Steelers I'm gonna have to dig into the archives and Crocs. So that would have been 2022. I think 20, let, let's let's take a moment. Let Chris do the, the research. But I think 2021, they were in there. Are you looking it up? I'm going to look it's, it up now. Yeah, I'm just going on yeah. there now to look it up. Yeah. It couldn't have been that long ago. But the fact that we're having to look this up kind of plays. To, it's been a minute since the Roosters were in a Maple Bowl. And similar to last year, uh, Maple Bowl is in, in Helsinki this year. 
Suzuki team probably are going to be in it. So it's either them or the Wolverines. And come on, let's be honest. Yeah, on the website, the it won't let me go back any further. It won't let me go back any further than 2023. Okay, obviously, this guy doesn't know how to do his research. But uh, so while I'm doing the research, Chris, what are some of the biggest changes for them going into this season? Biggest changes? Obviously, without Danny Kipner now, they've got a new receiver in Bryce Nunnally, who played at the Stuttgart Surge in the ELF. So electric playmaker for them this this season, um, and the other big one which we really need to talk about was the quarterback that they're going to be playing this year, which is Ambro. So Ambro going back to the Roosters from the Quapio Steelers, he didn't have a great season. Let's say turned the ball over a lot, was missing easy throws, throwing throwing interceptions, but. He's now back with the Roosters, and we said it off air, off camera. We were talking a little bit about it in that what you said, and this was your point that you made, and I kind of agree with you here, is that you said that they'll probably be a bit more nurturing towards him because he's a Roosters guy. He's gone through that program, and maybe it was too soon for him to branch out and go somewhere else. But, I mean, I don't really know what Quapio offered him, if they offered him some money or what was it they were giving him or how much money they were giving him to go there. But he's back with the Roosters now, not only have they signed a receiver for him, but they've also got an American running back, a Division Three guy, who, as we know, Division Three guys usually do the best out in Europe because they're not used to handouts. They're used to doing everything guy. themselves. Just let me jump in here real quick. The Division Three guy, he's not like just a Division Three guy. He was like the Heisman three also. Oh, yeah. They didn't get like an average like player. He was like the best – in the country in Division Three football. Yeah. Which they, they gave him the award. Division which three best in the country. I'm try, I'm gonna try and pronounce the name of the award, the award that they give him. So it's the Gagliardi trophy, which is the most outstanding player in the NCAA Division Three. So yeah, he was the best player in the country at Division Three. So they've got themselves a guy in Greenfield. So yeah, he should be a, a good one to watch and I can't wait to see what he puts out on that. That turf, that horrible velodrome turf, but can't wait to see what he puts out on there. And it's it's going to help Ambro having that playmaker with him. He he needs those guys around him to help him. I agree with you. I think Ambro is a huge change for them. I'm just I'm not going to keep harping on it because you've already done that for us. I, I'll talk about some stuff with Ambro later. Another change I think is going to be big for them is their they got a new defensive coach. Yeah. Um, they got Michael Wood, great coach for Europe. Um, last stint was a couple times in, in Italy before coming over to Helsinki. I think that's going to be a, a change. And I don't want to get too much into you making assumptions, but I think there's a difference between having a guy, like an American guy, to run your defense compared to having Kale, who is a Roosters guy and built that defense through the juniors as on the top level year after year after year, people knowing exactly what, what he wants from them. Everyone knowing what kind of players he needs for his system. Him also being able to adjust with the team year after year. And now to go to a different guy in charge, I'm not sure how to like, Oh, you're the DC. You get to make the plays, but we're still running our defense. Or does he come in and say, oh, we're going to run my defense now. But he don't speak Finnish. Right. And that's a pretty Finnish team overall. Like, they're heavily, like, the coach and the staff is all Finnish besides the defensive coordinator now, which means there's going to be that not negative thing. It can be done, but there's always going to be a little bit lag in communication because of that. And then it comes into the situation like when you get into games and you need to quickly, they need to happen like this. You need to tell your players this. You need to tell your coaches this. There might be a little bit of a delay with him not being finished descent. Or maybe he is a finished descent. I don't know his heritage like that. But I know he doesn't speak Finnish. And that communication process, the root, one thing that's always been a strength of theirs is they've always been able to have a large coaching staff and pretty much 
basically all being finished usually helps with that coaching staff. And now that I'm thinking about it, I could be 100% wrong about this because their offensive coordinator is Austrian. So maybe I'm 100% wrong. But I do think <laughs> that on the offensive side, I, I just, as I was just running and I'm talking, I'm like, hold on. I could just be going down the wrong out. But on the offensive side, it's a little bit easier to execute no matter what the communication is because everyone like terminology and stuff. Defensively, you're reacting more than anything. And that's what that's the situation that I'm more concerned about is when the you know snap decisions react to an offense, their offense, their defensive coordinator is gonna have to, you know, convey that to players. And there's a lot of nonverbal stuff that I don't know if they're going to be able to get that all going in time. In my opinion, with with their defensive coordinator, the biggest change is going to be hopefully not like it was last year where it took them a while to get going. But I think I do think defensively it might take a few games for them to really gel about how they communicate and how they get things done on the field. And you're going to when things start happening very rapidly, how do how does this defensive coordinator communicate with everyone to get everything by? And if they do a good job, I'll tell you one thing, Mike Wood is a hell of a coach because <laughs> it's not an easy thing to do. But if they don't do a great job at first, a bad coach would probably just mean that they have to figure something out. And he's actually got to Finland before the season, and he's been with the team in their office. They're gonna probably figure it out faster, uh, more than later. If that makes sense. And I didn't say that right. Sooner than later, they'll find it. Figure. It out. But before we go to the next section, I looked up the. I got the champions from this from the Maple Bowl, but I don't have the other teams. Last time they won it was 2019, and then it says the Steelers won in 2020 and 2021. But I do know the 20. 20- Good season, and that Roosters played the Steelers in that game, right? No, I think Roosters so, yeah. came in last place that year. No, that's the season, right? I thought it was the Wolverines. Was it the Wolverines? The Wolverines played them in 2020. Yeah. So 2021, it had to be the the Roosters. That was last 2021. Yeah. Because 2022, it was the Crocs and the Steelers, right? They almost beat the Steelers. Mm, yeah. And then 2023, they came back and, you know, we know what happened. So, yeah, it, 2021. But that's since they've been in it, which really don't even matter. Because for the Roosters, it's all about winning it. So, last time they won was 2019. So, it's going up the move. Half a decade. It's a new era. This could be the, you know, start of the next run. Who knows? Uh, real off base there. But we'll move on. Uh, We have an interview and stuff coming up. Calling all you football players. Are you ready to shine this midsummer? Join us at the AFF Nordic Challenge, June 18th through 21st in Helsinki. Showcase your skills to USA college coaches, train with some of the top coaches in Europe, and compete in one-on-ones. Get insider tips at exclusive recruiting sessions and seize international opportunities. You can even win big with camp-sponsored prizes. Space is limited, so register now. All right. I'm here with Daniel Stanzel, offensive coordinator for the Helsinki Roosters. Daniel, welcome to the podcast, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. It's good to have you on here, man. We're going to just kind of rapid fire through a couple of questions leading up to the season and see where it takes us. First question I have is, you personally um, talk about you, you know, continuing with the Roosters. What is kind of your motivation for, you know, coming back this season and saying, hey, let's give it another shot. Let's do this one more time. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think the Roosters are such a great organization that have built such a great culture. And I've been around this organization now for, I think, almost five or six seasons and going into my third season as an OC. Um, well, one of the, the main things they do so well here is the, the junior program. Um, we have a lot of kids that I worked with five years ago that have now transitioned into the, the men's team. And once you, I mean, you notice as a coach yourself, once you kind of get involved and you, you know, you, you're trying to help people get better and you can see their potential, it, it's really hard to not 
be part of that process. Um, exactly. You know, I think when this big uh, transformation happened, you know, like uh, when a lot of people stepped away, retired, or coaching changes happened, we we tried to build a new culture or redefine us, so to speak. And you know, I think we have made some huge steps the last two years. Um, you know, uh, I'm fully bought in. And, you know, kind of looking at our roster, that who's coming back, uh, the coaching staff we have, for me, it was a no-brainer, uh, no-brainer to be part of that organization again. That's awesome, man. And that actually leads me to the next thing is, you know, going into this season, I'm trying to get a little bit away from last year, but we have to, you know, preseason, we got to talk a little bit about last year. You know, you guys, you came on strong at the end of the season. You know, things started clicking. I'm 100% sure here on the podcast, we all had you favored to go to the Maple Bowl going into the playoffs because we're like, nobody wants to play a Roosters. It's crazy. Like, they're just playing too good right now. So I know going from that type of part of the season and then coming back this year, there's obviously going to be some changes. But what are a couple of things you think you guys are trying to improve on from last season so that you kind of start, you know, as fast as, as well as you ended last year? Yeah, man, I think uh, going back to last year and, and you, you know, you coached as well. It's, it's tough to, to start the way we did. Um, you know, that was not uh, uh, the best way to go into the season. I think that's the biggest improvement we have to make this year. You know, just I don't know if it has to be preseason games or certain things we have to do, uh, you know, do different. But we have to find our identity as quick as we can, um, you know, but going back to last year, too. The fact that we did what we were able to do as a team kind of shows also the the mental toughness of some of the guys. I mean, there's guys that sacrifice their you know their time, their their, their bodies, their their you know commitment. You know, you have other friends outside of football like enjoying their summer as like we are sitting there being 0 and four and just like what the hell are we gonna do? So I think we learned a lot from that. And I think all of us that are still with the team that were part of that saw, okay, this is the uh, ingredient we might need to put in like early on. All right. And, and I, I, I mean, definitely I learned a lot from last year as well. So I think there is uh, taking everything that we went through last year, the good and the bad, trying to like package that and, you know, kind of have that already like ready when we go into the season. I think, um, I mean, you, you, you constantly learn and constantly adjust and making certain adjustments. And, and you know, we, we have moved some pieces around. You know, we have obviously got a few new players on board. Um, you know, we just try to find our identity as early as we can so we don't have to do it, like, midway through the season like last time. Makes sense. So the next question I have for you is uh, let's get a little bit into the personnel that you have this upcoming season. What are some guys or some names on the, especially on the offensive side that, you know, we should probably be on a lookout for this season from the Roosters? So I think, um, do you want to go, I'm going to go finish first. Um, you okay. Know, because yeah. the, there's a few guys that you guys know about, and I think the league started to see it a little bit last year. Um, guys like Santo Beckumaki, who had his breakout year last year, um, who's, Man, he's put in even more work this off season. So it's truly exciting to like see uh, what the the final result will be come game uh, you know, game game day. Um, Lassi Payarinen, you know, he came back late last year because of an injury. Um, you know, uh, I know there's three Payarinen, but I, I think he's the chosen one. And you know, he has a full healthy off season. He's the one that you know also playing with the national team now. So, and of course, we can't forget about our quarterback. I, I, I mean, you guys know him. I've known him since he's a kid. I'm so excited to have him back. I, I can't tell you, like, you know, like it's, it was truly, um, you know, phenomenal to kind of watch how he has grown as a quarterback in person last year. I mean, you saw the Steelers. There was a lot of stuff that happened there, you know, on and off the field. And we, we basically witnessed Ambro. Um, growing up right in front of our eyes. So I think mm-hmm. that gives me a lot of excitement and, and you know, kind of coming back to our point about finding an identity. Let's not forget, Amro has now been with us for months. So we have, I feel like we've had a really good off season. him and actually our backup quarterback as well, Yeru Siloma, 
Um, they have had a tremendous offseason taking charge of the offense. So I think there's uh, three names for you that um, I'm very excited about. The coaching staff is excited about and um, household names that I think can even like make like an even bigger step this season. And of course, okay. you know, you know, when it comes to imports, uh, I've never had an uh, import running back and getting a guy like Ethan, who I, I don't know if listeners understand this, but he basically is like the Heisman Trophy winner of Division Three. Like that's mm -hmm. that's the real deal, you know. And and you know, having communication with him, and and you know, he's a student of the game. Um, I can't wait what that's going to look like. And you know, um, then we also get Bryce, uh, a receiver that has tremendous speed, and you know, uh, has had a few uh, cams as well on the professional level. I think both of those guys, you know, talk about weapons, um, getting your like young QB some weapons. Both those two guys, we, you know, we had, you know, a great process during the off season already with them. They're they're arriving here soon. So, man, I, I wish we could start next week. That's how excited I am. <laughs> oh wow, that's great. Uh, what about you? What about the offensive line? I mean, this isn't actually my, one of my questions, but now you have me thinking about it. You guys coming back with the same group, or are there going to be any changes there? So we are coming back with the same group. Um, okay. uh, we have, which is, I think we kind of forget about those guys because they're just like such a steady, you know, steady thing for us. Yeah. But you know. Um, Super excited about that O-line, obviously, because now a guy like Aki Aho, who was an all-star last year, you know, mm -hmm. um, but still, you know, being in his fourth year with us, now kind of being also like in a leadership role. Sampa Vekomaki, I mean, you know him. I don't have to kind of talk about him. Um, Alex Inetti, I think, was kind of like the identity we had of kind of having this like, man, like he was a destroyer out there on the field. Uh, Miko Doiminen is our center, um, who as you know, has a sumo wrestling. So there's, there's all this veteran. <laughs> and of course, Victor Askov yeah. is the right tackle um, that is going to jump in this year. He played basically, I think, 80% of our games last year. People kind of forget mm -hmm. about that. So it's uh, it's they, those guys have played with each other for like the last year. There's a good communication. They've made another step. We have, uh, I don't know if you know Patrick Azen, but he's our O-line coach. He originally comes from like, like the D line has done a few things with like scout uh, with scouting. He just uh, was at that camp in Germany where Justin Fields and Christian Wilkins were at as well. Um, he's an engineer, you know, it's like analytic guy. So not only do we try to kind of um, keep that O line strong and, and you know, kind of keep it like very constant, we also bring in new pieces. Patrick has been there last year and his kind of approach from like the defensive side, also analytic side, has also given them something new to work with. So Man, yeah, of course. I think um, for the fans, I talk about the playmakers first, <laughs> but from like yeah, you know, for us course. football nerds, the O line, uh, man, I'm unbelievable. I, that's awesome. Uh, that's that's one thing I'm excited about for the Roosters specifically. Is we said it on the podcast last year, and and you you alluded to it earlier. Um, there's kind of a change of the guard, and we said I remember last year we said at the beginning like we don't even know who half these kids are. Like who are these people? And now it's really good to see, like, last year you guys had, like like I said before, at the end of the season, just an explosion and people coming together. And now we're kind of figuring out who the Roosters are going into this new era. So that's really exciting. And that leads me to my next question. The 2024 Maple League season, you know, they, they changed the import rules a little bit, but not enough to really change, change anything, in my opinion. But – Again, this season, a lot of teams outside of the Roosters and Roosters and Butchers, probably the only two teams I think where the main core really stayed, both coaching staff and players. But outside of that, everybody, everything's different. Everyone has new players. Everyone has new coaches. Like there's a lot of change in the Maple League. So what what's been told to me is you know it's anybody's ball game this year for you personally daniel what are you what are you most excited about in this 2024 maple league season what are you most excited to like see or one aspect of the league i think with any change there's uh there's going to be some things that are exciting some things that people have to adjust to by bringing in more a players the level of football mm -hmm. must increase like that's just the, the yep. nature of things right 
And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys that, you know, people come to see. There's players on certain teams that people go to come watch. Um, so I think there will be more of that. I think it will give you guys a lot more, uh, you know, highlights to talk about, you know. Um, from an offensive perspective, I, I, I feel like um, last year, let's take the Butchers, for example, they had two imports on defense. Um, and I think Sena Yoki did the same. Um, so we have kind of seen that, right? Like we have seen two A players on the field and had to prepare for it, which is tough. But now the fact that you have to do this on both sides, I think will put a lot of stress on, on, on some teams, you know, having a good game plan ready, kind of preparing, like doing their scouting the right way. Because, I mean, we, we've seen some of those talents out there. And imagine you, you just, you know, hit the jackpot and you get four of those. Uh, like, that's the dream, right? Like, that's what every team is yeah. aiming for. <laughs> so, um, so I think I'm, I'm just very excited about, on, on one hand, like seeing how we obviously developed and, and, and giving us basically another opportunity to go, you know, um, have another in-person interview with you during the Maple Bowl week. Like, that's the dream, right? Um, so for yeah. us to kind of go into that pro season and then kind of the level of play, I think generally speaking, Finland has done uh, tremendous work in developing players. There's a reason why so many Finnish kids go all over Europe or even the U.S. and Canada. So, but I guess, um, and this actually, I had one question ready for you because uh, I was told that you had a little Maple Bowl, like a 2024 prediction. Um, also looking at... Oh. Yeah, yeah, of course, you know, like I heard. So uh, looking at, you know, like the league changes and everything, when you do those kind of things, um, I guess the team you kind of praise usually like all the players, like, yeah, like you finally got us, you got, got it right. How is the, the feedback when you, you know, you predict the season like that early in the stage? Um, is it more negative, positive? Like, tell us a little bit about that. I, I, would, I would say my situation is a little different than most people's situation because uh, I think I have a, a pretty good handle on, uh, no, I don't have a pretty good handle. I think the football community has a pretty good handle on where I stand most of the time. You know, I, I make my predictions and I stand behind them, but also I kind of play devil's advocate more than anything. You know, even last year, there was times like, I mean, all last year I called the poor blue butchers, the Dallas Cowboys, you know, that's, I mean, I said it in a good and bad way, but it mostly with the negative connotations, they couldn't win the big one. And then they win the championship and being on the media side, there's nothing that can actually like make me look bad at the end of the day. I can always say, you know, Hey, I'm glad you guys won or Hey, I'm, I, I will never be upset that someone lost. But I think when I make the predictions, the thing is everyone knows that the prediction I make is based off what the information I have at the time. I don't make I don't make predictions based off of what I think will happen or how I can project something. The information is given to me. And if this is what I think, then this is what I think. And I stay with that. But also at the same time, we do a midsummer of midsummer predictions where we're like, oh, let's change this whole thing up. And even <laughs> last year. Uh, we we changed the whole thing up in the midsummer. We're like, oh, because I think last year was was my worst prediction because I picked the Steelers to win the entire league, and then in midsummer, I think I picked the Steelers to come in last because we we're like, it's not the same team, and that's just kind of where we are with it. Is we make these predictions, people have to understand they're going to change as soon as week one happens. Like that, it is what it is. And I think Finland, we're in a good spot. Um, People understand people that actually follow the podcast and keep up with us. They understand that that's usually what we do is we, we make the predictions and then we kind of have to adjust once games happen. You said it earlier. And actually I said it earlier as well. Every year the teams change. It's not like the NFL and college. Well, old college before NIL and transfer portal where you can actually use last year to actually, you know, guesstimate what's going to happen in the Maple League. Most teams change imports every year. Year. Half the teams change coaches. A lot of Finnish players actually change teams every year. Even this year, my predictions is based on the fact that what I've said earlier, there's two teams in the Maple League that have brought back similar teams. Those are the two teams I would put up to contention for the Maple Bowl. And out of respect for one team having won it last year and then bringing back pretty much the same team, 
that's my pick. Yeah. And that's a logical sense. And I don't think anyone's really upset at that pick, but also depending on how the season goes, I do have more Roosters hats than anything. So, you know, it is what it is. There but I, I also <laughs> I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of teams that do it with their team with their players. I've always been a big fan of both the Roosters, Butchers, and Crocodiles, even though they don't do it nearly as much with their players as they used to. But now that they actually have the youth that they need, those are three teams that I look at all the time as I would like to see them with it, you know? And last year, it just happened to be the Butchers. But like I said, last year, we had y'all, we had the Roosters picked. A lot of us were going with the Roosters to win it all. I think, I think you played the Butchers. I think we picked I'm pretty sure I picked the Roosters to beat the Butchers in the semis. That's how I thought it was going to go out. But mm. it is what it is. But that's the thought process is make the pick, have no apol- no apologies, and once we see what happens, we just try to go from there. <laughs> Makes sense. You're the first person to ask me a question on these interviews. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> curious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, Daniel, again, thanks for coming on the podcast, man, and good luck to you and the Roosters this upcoming season. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for having me and, and reach out if anything else. All right, let's talk about obstacles. Chris, what is something you think they're going to have to overcome this season? I think – Something that their defensive backfield wasn't great last year, and they've addressed some of those issues now. They've picked up Ronnie Lane from the Quapio Steelers. They've also signed a safety in Julian Bell, an American safety. So I feel like if they can get the defensive side of the ball to be working again, I think their offense is good enough. You know, they've replaced like for like pretty much Danny Kittner for, for Bryce Nunnally. They've got an American running back as well. So I don't feel like offense is going to be too much of a problem. They've got a solid offensive line. You know, Mika Tominan's back and they, they've got a good offensive line. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. I feel like the biggest obstacle is making it click on defense. So you were talking about the head co- uh, the defensive coordinator in Mike Wood. Can he get those guys to play for him? Their, back, their defensive backfield wasn't great, as I said, last year. So it'll be interesting to see how he changes that. You know, what coverages is he going to play? Is he going to mix it up? Is he going to do some high stuff? Is he going to do some some sneaky things on the defense? I don't know. But I feel like the biggest obstacle is is defending the pass because they weren't great at it last year and teams passed all over them. So it'll be interesting to see, to see how they do in the secondary. I would go one step further just to add on to what you're talking about. Specifically, again, I said this about, um, I think last episode we were talking about the Crocodiles, I was talking about as the league Beavers were much better than the foreigners that they played against. And the Roosters were evidence of that. Both of their corners, whoever they had this season, they got demolished. Like they just couldn't win enough battles. And they don't really play like a, a man-to-man type of defense. It's not one-on-one a lot of times. But whatever their corners were doing, they weren't doing it well enough to hide that they were in like zone or something on the, the the ass end of what happened. And, of course, that could be blamed on the safety and stuff. But, again, I don't really care. It don't really matter. Like corner whatever. If you're next to a guy and he catches the ball, even if you weren't supposed to be there, it's on you because you were there. Yep. And that's how it right. went a lot of times. Broken coverages, like you said, their coverage in general, they, they had a lot of like just mental mistakes in coverage. But basically where you're just like, at some point you have to man up and make a play. Their corners never really could do that. The only time you really saw a great corner was when actually Olin decided, you know what, I'm a Dust it off, dust them off, yeah. Alpha Jallo, and, <laughs> and, and and he did his he did out there uh, against uh, one of the best receivers in the league, but you didn't see that on a consistent basis from this team. And like you said, they've addressed it. We hopefully they'll overcome that obstacle. My obstacle for them, and I'm gonna be a little cheeky when I say this, the obstacle just need to overcome this season is. Ambro Johansson, Ooh. is that his last name? I don't Ooh. be 
Yep. But it's Amber. Ambro Ambro Johnson. Ambro Johansson. Sorry, Amber. Yeah, I, I call him Ambro so much. I just forgot his last name completely. I'm sorry. I just is, is Amber. Er Janssen, it is what it is. Er Janssen. Er Janssen. Er Janssen. Yeah. It's the U R J A S O N. That's it. Yeah. O N. Yeah. O E N. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Er Janssen. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to like kill like crap on his last name. I just call him Ambro. But. Ambro is the obstacle to overcome, and the reason I say that the offense is going to be dictated by how well he does, but it's also going to be dictated by how well he doesn't do. They brought in, you know, some uh, import receiver, import running back. It's still going to be up to him to make the right decisions with the ball. And last year, with him playing in Coopio, we what we saw, we did not see a good product. No, um, in my opinion, he regressed from what he was doing in Helsinki. And I know staff and the players, they're all supporting him. And they think that, you know, he's going to be great this season. And they put him in a great environment. That's awesome. But I'm mad before the season starts. Going into the season, I got to tell you what I see. And what I see is if he's anything like what we saw in Quopio, the issue for them early in the season. In Quopio, I believe he had great decision-making. He put the ball – he knew where to put the ball, when to put the ball, and to be. But his biggest problem was he physically couldn't get it there. A lot of the throws that he had just didn't go the way that it shows mechanics. It's not decision-making. It's not he's not smart enough or he's not ready for the challenge. He knew when to get rid of the ball, where to put it, get there. The ball was always late. Um, I can't – now – I'm getting flustered thinking about it. But his number one receiver, the finish receiver from Quopi, saved him so many times on badly thrown balls where the receiver had to go oh, yeah. back and get a ball because he's wide up. Yeah. Yo, Hunter, how are you? Yeah. Hunter had to you. catch ball. Yeah, he had to go back, catch balls, moss guys in the end zone, which looks great. It really just showed that a lot of Ambrose throws were – you know, missing something. I think with the Roosters, even the year before, we saw a little bit of him. We saw a lot of throws where he was throwing the wide open receivers. So you can't really judge his throwing. Last year, he was put in a situation where the receivers weren't always wide open, but they were open. And it's kind of the difference between this is a horrible comparison, but it's the difference between playing and playing in the NFL. A quarterback in college, you're playing against a lot of people who maybe aren't going to be NFL talent, and you can look. And then you get to the NFL, everybody's so good. A little bit, a a little bit late, a little bit slower, looks horrible. And that's what Quopio. His throws were good, but they weren't great. And you could tell the difference between him and an American quarterback in those situations. Now, you know, they're assuming that, oh, we're going to get him in such good situations that we can hide that. I think that's the obstacle you're going to have to overcome because I think that the be as dominant as they were before when he was on that team, I think they were going to be good this year, but he's still going to have to prove to be a, like, that's something they're going to have to overcome. And, again, I don't think he's going to be bad. I'm not saying he's going to be bad, but what he did last year, they're going to have to season and prove that he's actually progressed instead of staying at the same or regressed from last year's status. That's what I got. Other obstacles. I feel like I went a little long on air, bro, but I, I had to do it. Hey, you got hey, you got to. I mean, like you say, last year, he, he wasn't that guy. He wasn't him. He's back where he knows and where he belongs with the Roosters, so it'd be interesting to see how he is in this different environment. Is he going to be back to his Old ways, or are we going to see the Quapio Ambro? Which Ambro are we going to see? Hey there, fans of American football in Finland. Want to show some love and support to your favorite podcast? For just three euros, you can buy us a cup of coffee and help keep our podcast running strong. But why stop at one cup? Why not support each host with a cup? Visit buymeacoffee.com and show your support today. Cheers to keeping the conversation going. All right, let's talk about keys to success for the Helsinki Roosters. Chris, what you got? 
keys to success, being able to run the ball well and protect with their offensive line. So I'm going to say that offensive line is their keys to success. They've always historically had a very good offensive line. They run the ball well. They get good pass protection. I feel like their biggest key is that O-line. And we always say it, you know, games are won and lost in the trenches. But in particular with them, with with Ambro, when he's under pressure, he doesn't make good throws. When he's got time to sit there and wait and look and watch and scan the defense, he's going to make better throws. The running back that they've got, he's arguably, well, he was, he was the best running back in D3 in America last season. So if that offensive line can create holes for him, as soon as he gets to the second level, he's going to be a hard one to tackle. So I feel like their keys to success are yeah. running the ball, running the ball well, and offensive line play. Yeah, I want to go like with a different one, but I really like what you said about the offensive line. Um, my first like bold statement out here. I wish Q was here because he would probably co-sign on this one. Uh, hey, I, I would love I would roosters. love Q to be here. You do, you know you need Q when you're talking about the Roosters because he's just gonna go off and right? that rooster on yeah. the diamond. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> putting this without Q talking about the Roosters, but. The Roosters have the best offensive line in Finland. Hands down. Better than Quapios? No one. Be- better than Quapios? Better. Better. You're right. Better. 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 Cause okay. You got one through five. Like, let, let's go through it. Okay. Miko Toyman. Yep. One of the best centers in the league. I'm going to, I got to shoot you straight. I didn't have him as number one last year, but he's a good 1A for me, you know. Number two mm. sometimes the matchup is. And then the two guards you have, again, I'm going to say their names wrong, and I'm so sorry, but you have 64, if I'm not mistaken. That's Ajo. And then you have Narky or Narky in a Nar- Nari. A- Alexi Nari. Alexi Nari. Alexi Nari. Alexi Nari. Nari, yeah. Yeah, those are your two guards. There's some there's some hog mollies down there. They get um I think a lot of people were high on Nari last year. Um he just had like a breakout season. Um Aho was again very good. You can't really name better guards. Maybe one or two. Again, I'm I'm not going Quopio with this this year, but just saying as those three together. You're not really getting through that line. And then on the ends, <laughs> left tackle. The uh, Samuli Vekamaki. Vekamaki, I mean, yep. Come on now. That's one of the best that's one of the best to do it. And then on the other side, you have the the young I wanna say Olaf? Olaf? I can't remember how to say his name. But um he actually ended up playing most uh for Tony Koskinen on that right tackle spot. And he might be the weak link out of the five, but yeah. as a weak link out of that, he'll be a starter on every other team in the league. So that's okay for me. And again, he's at right tackle, not left tackle. Probably because of that is he's a little younger guy than the rest of them. And then they have uh, one or two guys behind them. who We don't know their names, but they get in and you don't know that they're not and that's pretty good from a substitution standpoint. You can get in the game, and people don't know the starters are out. This group has played together for most of them, actually more than three or four years. But the last two or three years, they've been continually on the field together playing. And if you play, it's all about communication and being able to trust what each other are doing and knowing how people respond to certain situations offensive line that is jailed like this offensive line is, the sky's the limit. Look at what happened last year. They had two running backs rampant throughout the end of the season. Um, Ville Hamelainen and what was the other guy's name? I can't – I always forget what his name was. We called him UC. The, the other running back. Both of them, they were interchangeable at the end of the season. And they were both able to get their yards how 
well as um, Lassi Payar, and then who he got hurt, so he didn't see a lot of him. And they have a couple of running backs that they could healthy this season. But ultimately, it didn't matter who you put back there because the offensive line was going to be able to make room, and this group can do it. So I that's agreeing with you 100%, Chris, is that offensive line, and it is the best offensive line in Finland. And if you disagree with that, at perfect purpose, and we'll talk about it, and I'll explain why I'm right and you're wrong. For this episode of American Football in Finland, any last words before we get out of here, Chris? I'm just – I'm gutted we didn't get Q on this episode to talk about the Roosters because <laughs> we all know that boy loves the Roosters. <laughs> so it's a shame he's not here, but, yeah, we should have him back for the next one. So, yeah, it'd be good to get you back, Q. And, uh, yeah, I, hey, Roosters, they, they look like a good team this year. I think they're going to do better than they did last year. You know, they just squeaked into the playoffs at number four. So I think good things to come for the Roosters. And I can't wait to see Ambro and see how he is in a different environment because I really gave him a lot of – lot of shit last year so hey stand up like you're in a new new environment well an old old but new environment so let's see how you go i i got two things i want to know what you just said first of all even when q comes back for the next show he's still gonna talk about the roosters he'll find a way <laughs> to get them in there so that'll be interesting <laughs> he's gonna bring the roosters in there somehow some way He's going to throw them in there. We might have to give him a good five minutes and say, just get everything off your chest now. That's how that episode goes. And then secondly, I know you said you gave Ambro a lot of shit last year. I basically already gave him shit at the beginning of this episode. I want to set the record straight. I, personally, this is my opinion, and you can hold me to this if you need to, I break out here. I think he's going to be great. I think he's in the right situation. He's a good quarterback, and I think last year was experience for him to know what he needs to do this year. And I think now that he's back in Helsinki where he belongs, around surrounded by people, push him the way that he needs to be pushed. I believe he'll do great. I think he's going to put up, you know, what? I mean, how many yards do most quarterbacks put up? At least three stars. I think he'll put up good, good numbers. I think they'll make the playoffs again I'm not, without giving away my predictions. I think they might this year, but who knows? Also got to look at some other teams. But I, I expect good things from the Roosters this year. They're, they've always been one of the teams I like. And they're my favorite this year because I've already picked the Butchers uh, publicly, so can't really backtrack from that. It is what it is. But I do think that yeah. they see them. So we wish the Roosters good luck this season. We'll be watching every week right here on the AFF podcast. Uh, subscribe, like, share on all the social media channels at American Football in Finland. Until next time, never. T. I. F. We gone. We gone. <laughs> American football in Finland.